Hi, I'm Joe Pereira from Boston College EMS and you're watching an Eagle EMS training video. Today we're going to be talking about alcohol related emergencies. This video is going to be split into two parts. The first part is just basically going to be me lecturing you about different signs and symptoms, uh, the important questions that you need to ask someone who has a medical emergency related to alcohol, and also your transport decision. So the first thing that I would like to talk about is the relevancy of alcohol related emergencies. Most people typically associate alcohol related emergencies with college campuses and that's a very valid point because they are definitely relevant and happen quite frequently, especially on weekend nights and Thursday nights. But you can't always get blindsided because alcohol related emergencies do happen elsewhere within the communities and towns and emergency first responders and transporting ambulances need to be ready. So the first thing that we need to talk about is signs and symptoms and being able to recognize alcohol-related emergencies. The first thing that you might realize is that the person has an unsteady gait or an altered mental status. They also might be nauseous, vomiting, might have dizziness. They might also have vitals that are slightly elevated if they're agitated, or they could be depressed if they're in more of an unconscious, unresponsive state. You also need to remember that pupils might be dilated. An important question that you want to ask if you find dilated pupils is whether or not the person has taken any other drugs other than alcohol. You also might find copious amount of, of vomitus on scene or the patient might be actively vomiting, which is a sign of alcohol poisoning. Those are some important signs and symptoms of alcohol-related emergencies, and there are many more. Can you think of any? Bet you probably can. Once you determine that your patient has an alcohol-related emergency, you need to determine their mental status. You need to find out what they're alert and oriented to. Next, you can go into your assessment questions to supplement your sample history. These questions will give you a better idea of where your patient's condition is. The first question that you want to ask is how much the patient had to drink and what they had to drink. Then you can find out when they stopped and when they started drinking. This will give you a good indication on whether or not your patient is on their way up or if the patient is on their way down. By this I mean if your patient drank, let's say, five hours ago and stopped four hours ago and had eight shots over that interval, by the time that you arrive on scene, chances are your patient's condition is getting better because your bo their body has had time to process the alcohol. On the other hand, if the patient started drinking one hour ago and stopped ten minutes to your arrival and had eight shots, their body probably hasn't had time to process the alcohol and their condition may deteriorate. After you ask those questions, the next thing that you need to find out is if they lost consciousness. Do they remember everything from when they started drinking to when they stopped drinking and also to when you arrive? Next, you can get into some questions related to pertinent negatives. Do they have any head, neck, or back pain? Nausea, vomiting, dizziness. Do they fall? You can again ask if they lost consciousness, if they have any shortness of breath, and any additional pertinent negatives that you feel are relevant to the situation. One thing that you always want to do, especially with an alcohol-related emergency, is ask the questions continuously because the patient's mental status might prevent them from giving an accurate answer. So if they initially don't answer your questions, you might want to revisit them a later time. Let's say while you're giving vitals and you might have more trust developed between you and your patient. This will give you a clear indication and a more accurate representation of your patient's condition. Next, we'll talk about some secondary injuries that might be related to alcohol-related emergencies. With possible ETOH patients, you always need to be aware of secondary injuries, and you can't have tunnel vision when responding to these calls. You need to be aware of such possible injuries such as falls, lacerations, head pain, neck pain, back pain, and other trauma. This is important when it comes down to physical exam that's detailed and your assessment questions, going back to those pertinent negatives such as head, neck, or back pain and loss of consciousness. With alcohol-related emergencies, it's important not to have tunnel vision for other reasons. These considerations include medical emergencies that mimic the signs and symptoms of alcohol-related emergencies. These include diabetes, stroke, and other forms of altered mental status. Always make sure that if a patient's history indicates these types of diseases, such as diabetes, you take the necessary precautions to make sure that the incident is in fact alcohol-related emergencies 
and not one of these other ones. For instance, if your patient says that they're a type 2 diabetic, it's probably a good idea to get a glucometry reading or call for ALS so that they can get a glucometry reading. After you're done assessing your patient, it's really important that you choose the proper transportation for them. If you think that their condition is able to be handled by your scope of practice, then you can usually go with the BLS rig to transport them to a hospital. If you think that their condition or signs and symptoms warrant ALS, such as their condition being out of your scope of practice, or they're unconscious or unresponsive, for example, then radio in for an ALS rig to have them transported to the ER. You also want to make sure that the patient is properly packaged. This goes back to your assessment and physical exam. For instance, if the patient has head, neck, or back pain, this might indicate that they need to be backboarded. Or, it might be the case that they're ambulatory and can be transported via stretcher. Every patient is different and you need to treat them appropriately and responsibly, not having tunnel vision when you get called for an ETOH patient. The next portion of the video will follow EMTs in a real-time assessment. You will have a chance to answer questions intermittently throughout, which will help you get a better grasp of ETOH assessment. The question will range and vary from what should the EMT do, what will the next step be, and what do the EMTs forget or miss. This will get you a better chance to understand how to properly treat someone with a suspected medical emergency related to alcohol consumption. Hello, hi, I'm an EMT. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Andrea. Andrea, can you tell me where you are right now? It's the wrong castle. Okay, can you tell me about what time of day it is? Nice time. Nice time. Can you tell me what happened? Um, I drank just a little bit too much. Okay, what did you have to drink tonight? Uh, shots. Shots? Shots of what? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you know how much you had to drink though? Uh, just, just three. Just three? When did you start? Um, about an hour ago. An hour? When did you stop? Okay. And Kristen, you want to get a set of vitals? vitals? What is another assessment tool the EMTs should use? If you chose D, you're right. You're right. Did you lose consciousness at all? Um, did I know? Did you fall? Mm, no. You don't have any head pain? Any neck pain? Mm -mm. Okay. Any back pain? No. No? Are you nauseous? A little bit? Just a little. Did you vomit at all? Yes, a little. You did? When did you vomit? Um, right before you got here. Okay. Just, here a, little. Just a little bit. Just a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you dizzy at all? Just a little bit. Okay. And can you tell me again what you drank? Um, shots. Shots? Shots of what? Um, vodka. Vodka. Okay, and how many shots again? Just making sure. Three or four. Three or four. Okay, and that was an hour ago, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you have anything to eat today? Um, yeah. What did you have to eat? What was the last thing you ate? The last thing I ate. Um, pizza. Pizza. And how long ago was that? Um, dinner time. Dinner time. Okay. Okay. Um, and just making sure you didn't fall at all, right? And you have no pain anywhere? Um, no. Okay, do you have any allergies? Poison ivy. Poison ivy? Oh my god. Okay. Are you on medication? No. No? Does anything like this ever happen to you before? Uh, no. No? Maybe. Okay, and can you tell me again what happened, why, why we were called? I went out to the patty. Okay. And did a friend call for you? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Kristen, what were the vitals? Um, pulse was 84, BP was 120 over 80. Okay, great. We'll make sure we document that. Thinking BLS transport? Yeah. Okay. We're going to get you packaged. We're going to put you on a stretcher, and we're going to take you to the hospital. Are you okay with that? Okay, great.